Look at that. Okay, hang on. I've actually written this whole script intro thing about the specs and what's new. We'll come back to that in a second. I just want to show you as best I can what I can see through this. So right now I've got my iPhone 15 Pro Max plugged into the Xreal uh, Pro glasses just via the USB-C port. Obviously huge upgrade this year with the iPhones, which means there's no more messing about with lightning to USB. I can plug it straight in. And so I'm actually seeing this live viewfinder for my camera app, basically what you're watching in my glasses. Oh, there you go. You've got those little squares in each lens. Although for me, I'm seeing one nice long rectangular image across the two. But the real magic is this button here. Look at that. Okay, let me back off for a second. Xreal, who used to be called Nreal, have launched two new pairs of their AR glasses, their augmented reality glasses. We've got the Air 2 and the Air 2 Pro. And this is all very exciting for a lot of reasons, including that Xreal's co-founder has flown over to the UK for the launch event and also very kindly offered to meet up with me and answer some of my burning questions about these new glasses. And what better, more British place than in a pod on the lastminute.com London Eye. PJ. All right, Tom. Hi, how are you? Good, good. How are you? I'm good. I should probably take these off. And I think you've flown in just to hang out with me and answer a few questions, right? Well, the word on the street is that uh, if we want to do anything in the UK, you're the man to see. Uh, <laughs> so here we are. I appreciate that. Yeah. And I think you're also launching some new glasses, aren't you? Yes, we are. My name is PJ. I'm one of the co-founders of Xreal. Uh, we're the best selling AR glasses brand uh, in the world. And with our latest product, we're trying to bring into the UK market. But I'm most excited because I'm a big fan of the original Xreal Airs. These guys, I've been using them for a little over a year on and off, but now we have the Air 2 and the Air 2 Pros, which are just better in pretty much every way, including how comfortable they are to wear. It's quite remarkable going from the old one to the new ones, just how much nicer these feel. Now, if you're new to all this, the Xreal Airs are the world's best-selling AR glasses. And they're essentially a slightly chunkier pair of sunglasses that you plug into your phone, your laptop, your games console via the USB-C port. And it'll mirror the screen onto the dual micro OLED displays in the glasses. So you see a massive 130-inch screen right in front of your eyes. And it is genuinely incredible for watching movies, for gaming, and working. Versus the OGs, they're 25% brighter, we're talking 500 nits versus 400, they're 10% thinner and 10% lighter, and just a whole lot more comfortable to wear. You can customize them now with their new Kaleido kits with six different color options, and there's also this very bold new limited edition red model of the Air 2. Comfort was the key focus, right? Because if you want to wear these for two hours, three hours, you know, at a time, you know, we want you to feel less pressure on the nose, uh, which is why we changed the weight distribution. Um, so now it's one-to-one -one ratio. So with more weight shifted to the back, okay. it's much lighter on your nose. Yeah. We redesigned the nose pad. You know, we call them airbags. <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> you know, you can tell they're much softer yes. uh, compared to the uh, first version. With the new uh, Micro OLED panel from Sony, we're able to reduce the thickness by about 10% off the top. Yeah. And then we can also reduce the weight by about 10%. We changed the leg design to flexible design. So it doesn't give you as much pressure on the temples. And it just uh, it's just so much more comfortable. The built-in stereo speakers have been significantly upgraded with a much richer and fuller sound and are also more directional to your ear so people around you hear less. And also, while both the Air 2s come with these much nicer looking block out shade things that clip onto the front, and with these new ones, it still looks like you're wearing a regular pair of glasses, unlike these older matte plastic light shades, but this is where the Air 2 Pro has its killer feature. With instant electrochromic dimming. Hopefully you can just see this sort of blocking out the light going into my glasses. It is absolutely incredible. Generally, like, I, I <laughs> I'm lost for words. I review so much tech and usually it's like, oh, it's 20% faster, it's a little bit better. You know, these sort of incremental upgrades. This is a properly game-changing technology, and it works by sending a specific electrical charge onto the lenses, which means it can instantly block out different amounts of light. Uh, with our glasses, you can see out of the glasses into the real world, which yes. means that the lighting condition changes will affect the uh, display quality. With, uh, with the original Air, you know, it's hard to use these glasses when there's bright sunshine, sunshine outside. We shipped uh, a dimmer with it, but uh, you know, it's really not the best way to tackle this issue. So with Air 2 Pro, uh, we thought we added uh, 
electronic dimming, right? So there are three levels of dimming. Um, in the darkest mode, it only lets in about 0.1% of light. Yeah. Right, so it is almost a completely dark, but you can still see what's outside, so you don't feel blind. I really appreciate that you've not gone for like, even if it was a technical limitation, but it's not <laughs> full 100%, like putting light blockers on, because right. I find with noise canceling headphones sometimes, right. you feel a little bit claustrophobic, a bit vulnerable, that's like right, that's putting right. on a VR headset. Yeah. So you can still see just a tiny yeah, bit. I, I never used the dimmer we shipped uh, with Air One because okay. it just made me blind. I didn't, I didn't like that feeling. <laughs> yeah, I, I like to be able to know what's going on yes. around me. So it is just that dimming that is exclusive to the pros. Otherwise, the Air 2s are identical including these new displays, because the Air 2s are the world's first AR glasses to use Sony's latest micro OLED displays. We have a 1080p per eye resolution. It supports up to 120Hz refresh via air casting. And of course, being an OLED, we have all those inky blacks, thanks to the 100,000 to one contrast. This latest Sony micro OLED panel, uh, they're smaller in size, but they feature the same resolution, which means the pixel density is much tighter. Yes. Right. So we put a lot of effort into trying to improve the uh, color accuracy. For the Air 2 series, um, each pair of glasses is individually calibrated, which is a process that only high-end cell phones uh, uh, in, you know, employ. Yeah. Uh, so we're doing all of that just to make sure that what you're looking at is beautiful. In fact, they've worked with TV Rhineland for color accuracy, flicker-free, eye care, and eye comfort certifications. And I can tell you, I've watched a full three hour movie on these things and it wasn't uncomfortable at all. Just make sure you adjust the nose clip. You can sort of squeeze it together or push it apart a little bit or switch it out to one of the two other options for the best fit. And also remember the arms on the glasses can be adjusted. You've got three different options. And as usual, they bundle a prescription lens accessory. So you can wear these if you usually wear glasses. And like the original Airs, we still have a 46 degree FOV or field of view. So kind of like, if you were to hold your phone, I'm trying to match it with my laptop screen that's being mirrored into my glasses right now, there, in front of your eyes. Although the difference is, well, firstly, I'm not having to hold a device right in front of my eyes like this the whole time. And also, this isn't virtual reality. I can see through, it's translucent. So I can see my camera lenses right there, even though I've got my laptop screen mirrored right in front of me. And of course, I've got my usual peripheral vision here. So unlike a VR headset, you can walk around and pick up your cup of coffee and talk to people, you know, normal everyday stuff. But if you want a more immersive, darker, more sort of, you know, movie theater experience, then you can pop on these bundled light blockers, which are much nicer than the original ones. I can just about see these windows directly through it, but it's a much nicer experience. It makes the screen that I'm looking at obviously a lot more vibrant. It doesn't have that sort of translucency anymore, but I still have my periphery here, which is nice. And then obviously with the pro models, you have the electrochromic dimming. Although bear in mind, it will only work if it's connected to a power source because there is no battery in the glasses themselves. It is incredibly difficult to show these off. And the best way I found is just by sticking my iPhone's camera into one of the lenses. But just to be clear, what I'm seeing looks a lot better than this. There's no screen door effect. It's incredibly sharp and also perfectly stable, unlike my terrible iPhone footage. What I'm trying to say is you have to try these yourself to get the best experience. What's your main use case for it? How do you use it? And also, yeah. if someone's trying it for the first time, yeah. how would you sort of to show it off. The simple thing to do is to plug them into now iPhone 15 with the USB-C port. You can do that right now. Right? So you, you plug yeah. them into iPhone and you open Netflix or Prime Video and boom, right there, you are in a home theater, 130 inches right in front of you. I use these glasses the most when I travel, uh, when I fly, uh, say on the way from China to the UK, I was wearing these glasses, you know, normally four to five hours at a time. And to me, you know, it's very important. I don't have to bend my head forward because it gives me just crazy neck pain. Now, another way I use our glasses is that when I do cycling, when I do stationary cycling, because, you know, it's kind of boring. A movie on your phone is just, it's just not satisfying, right? So I wear our glasses when I do a cycling. So there's a whole bunch of ways you can use these. Most of the time I find myself just plugging the USB-C port, obviously one side into the glasses and then the other into my phone or my tablet and just mirror the screen like that and watch a show or play a game. Obviously, same thing for your games consoles, USB-C. It's also useful when Mrs. Tech Chap is watching her rubbish on the main TV and I want to watch something, well, different, let's just say, or play something. So I can, you know, still sit with her, but be in my own little world. 
And gaming is such a cool experience, particularly on like a Switch or a Steam Deck or an ROG Ally, because it is just the one USB-C cable. It also means you can lower the brightness on the tablet or device you're using to save some battery because obviously the screen is mirrored here and you don't have to be hunched over. You can just, you know, play it in a more relaxed way. Just look straight ahead of you. I've even plugged it into my drone. So the controller screen here is mirrored in my glasses, which means I can have a proper first person view or FPF. I'm flying this just looking through the glasses. And of course with the Air 2 Pro's dimming, it's much easier to pilot this even if you're in direct sunlight. Also, if you are on an Android phone or on any laptop, you can download their Nebula app, which gives you this sort of 3D AR space hub and there's a bunch of sort of optimized apps and games in that augmented reality world. Although I actually don't find myself using it that much. What I do find myself using more is this X-Beam. As I say, this is an optional extra, costs you about $120. Here's one I made earlier. This is one of your X-Beams. X-Real Beam. X-Real Beam. There you go. There you go. Does this still work with this? Oh, yes, it does. The beam, it allows three additional display modes. If you plug these glasses um, into your phone or yeah. into your Steam Without app, this, just normally. Right, without that, yeah. you will see something that we call error casting, okay. which is basically where the screen moves, you know, uh, according to your head movement, right? And it's 130 inches. With beam, um, we are giving people three additional display options. We call them spatial display, okay. right? So the first is a body anchor, which is where the screen will stay fixed in, in the air. It, it, it moves with your body. It doesn't move with your head. So if you turn your head left and right, it stays, there. it stays there. The second mode is smooth follow, where we use algorithms to smooth out the minor vibrations. So when you're inside a moving vehicle, the image will stay stable, yeah. right? It doesn't you know, move around. Um, the third is side view, which is uh, where we allow you to shrink the display to a smaller size and move it to the side. So when you're trying to get uh, from point A to point B, there's nothing blocking your line of sight. Beam is essentially a spatial display enabler, uh, if you will, okay. right? You use the wired connection and it will allow you to have the three additional display modes. I see. So if you are thinking about buying a pair of these, then I would definitely suggest considering an X-Beam as well, just to get the most out of it. Do you ever sort of walk around wearing these? Do you sort of go on your morning walk, get coffee? Not really. I have walked around on a treadmill. Yeah, okay. <laughs> Not so much around, but I've been, you know, I, uh, so uh, I think most people use our glasses still more for stationary use. Yeah. Uh, when they're sitting down, you know, either on a train, on a flight, or at home, or Starbucks. Okay. Right, so I think this is still the primary use case. Going forward, of course, these glasses, you know, are built for walking around. Well, yeah, I mean, and they look, they look pretty much just like a slightly chunkier pair of sunglasses. They're, they look good, man. I mean, people- just admit it. <laughs> yeah. They look good. I mean, I look good wearing them. I don't know if yes, everyone- you do. <laughs> Yes, you do. <laughs> but obviously, if you've got a cable running down your back, you know, you might get one or two looks. But as you say, it's primarily about home office improvement, travel. That's right. And, and make, like a, having a, a movie that's right. Theater That's right. on your face, That's right. That's wherever right. you are. That's right. I think the movie theater piece is very important because up to now, we've had to compromise display size okay. for portability. Even with iPad, you know, you can put it in your pocket, right? It becomes a little bit harder to carry. Now, I think with these glasses, um, you can finally have a home theater experience with you at all times. So how much? Well, the Air 2s will cost you 399 pounds here in the UK, same in dollars, and the Air 2 Pro will be 449 pounds, same in dollars. So it's 50 quid more for the Pro, which gets you the electronic dimming. October 24th, uh, we're going to start um, open the pre-order process for Air 2, Air 2 Pro on our website. And we're gonna go on Amazon as well with the aim to start shipping these products in the, by early November. Well, PJ, I really appreciate your time. Oh, thank you. Answering my questions, putting up with me. Yeah, excellent. And just, yeah, keep making these cool, cool glasses. Will do. But this will be our last interview, so. <laughs> <laughs> in that case, I'm taking these with me. <laughs> All right.